scriptures in the Bible where God talks about this fresh wind, the Holy Spirit breathing a new life, breathing a new life into the earth at the beginning of Genesis and creating the universe, breathing a new life into the early church, breathing his Holy Spirit a new life into his people, starting with his disciples and then into you and me. God, we seek this fresh wind, this Holy Spirit, to breathe with us, breathe within us this morning, Father. You have a purpose for each and every one of us. Yes, we need fresh wind.
your spirit out, Lord. Pour your spirit out, Lord. Oh, we receive you, God. We receive your spirit, Lord. Fresh wind around this place, God. Pour it out. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, God, that you didn't leave us here to do life without you. Thank you that your spirit is freely available to us. God, pour it out here. Pour it out in each and every life here this morning. Pour it out in this church, God. Fill this room with the wind of your fresh wind. God, we thank you and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Hi, guys. My name is Alex. I'm on staff here. We are so excited that you are here. Maybe this is your first Sunday joining us online. Maybe this is your first Sunday here in the room. Uh, we have just been praying that God would meet you exactly where you are. Whatever that looks like today, whatever brought you here today, whatever brought you online to find us this morning, that God would meet you exactly where you are with whatever you need in your life. And we are so grateful that you're here with us today. If you are looking for a home church, we would love for you to consider Crossroad. Um, we probably are the most welcoming, kind church that I have ever seen or ever been a part of. And that is a thing that we hear over and over again. And may it be so for you as well. And so uh, if you are looking to get connected here, we'd love to answer some questions. Uh, maybe get you connected in a group with some other folks that are going through the same thing that you are going through, that seasonal thing. It's always important to have somebody to talk to and pray with you. So you can scan the QR codes right in front of you if you're here in the room. If you're joining us online, there's a link there in the comments. But our favorite way to do that is to get connected right out here in the lobby at the welcome table. There's balloons there and there's always going to be somebody there who knows a lot about Crossroad, who knows a lot about whatever you might need. And so we'd love to be able to get you connected that way. So stop by there after the service today. Another way that we love to connect with folks is through prayer. It is so important to have folks that can pray for you in your life. And so again, you can scan the QR code right in front of you there. Um, and probably my favorite way is to grab that uh, card right in front of you there if you're here in the room and you can write down your prayer request. You can even flip it over and text in a prayer request. But in just a couple minutes, we're going to have an opportunity. And you can just put those right in the offering plates as they go by. And so we have a team that prays for those. If you're texting it in, we have a team that prays for those as well. Um, and so I just want to take a couple minutes and tell you about some things going on in the life of our church here at Crossroad. And so you may have noticed on your way in beyond all of the awesome welcome signs for our brand new pastor that starts today. We are so excited. So in between all of those welcome signs, there were uh, some pumpkins on the window. We've been kind of jokingly and affectionately calling that our pumpkin patch. Um, and so I just want to take a moment and tell you what that is. If you have not been here before, essentially it's a way for us to support our youth and support the journey that God has them on right now. And so this is actually the second one that I have picked up. And you can stop by the table and they'll tell you all the details. I'm not going to tell you all of those things, but... Here is a cool thing. I will not read you the whole thing. I just want to read you a line or two because what you're going to get is some information about one of our students that's in youth ministry and why it matters to them. And so this student says, when I was younger, I thought I had to believe in Jesus. So I did. But when I got older, I started to think for myself and started questioning. When I got old enough for youth, I started learning more in depth what God has done for us. And then he goes on and continues and talks about a mission trip that they do where they get to go hike on part of the Appalachian Trail. It's an incredible trip. Um, and part of what you're doing here is supporting that trip for them as well. It says every night we would share something called holy ground around a campfire. It's a place where you feel God in the moment. His presence in nature is amazing. That is my favorite retreat out of all when I can actually feel God. And so this is what our youth ministry is doing, is helping students along that journey. And I think that there might be many of us in this room who maybe there was a time in our own lives where we were questioning things. And there needs to be a place where they can do that. 
where they can feel safe, where they have friends, where they have some incredible youth leaders that will walk alongside them for that journey. And so I encourage you to stop by the pumpkin patch, air quotes, out here in the lobby today and see how maybe you can support that ministry as well. And then another great thing that we have coming up is our trunk or treat. We are so excited for that. It's just in a couple of weeks, guys. This is probably one of our biggest events where we invite the community onto Crossroads campus. And every time they come on to our campus, we are building trust. We're building, sometimes people call it relational capital, a way that maybe the next time they are looking for a church, they're looking for something to do with their family, they might think of Crossroads first. And so this is a huge event. It's fantastic. Now, I did some math, which is not my forte, but I did figure out that we need approximately 18,000 pieces of candy in order for this event to be a success, because most children will not trust us if we are not giving them candy, I think. It's <laughs> kind of backwards, really, but that's how it works. And so we are still looking for some candy. If you're able to grab a bag on sale somewhere or whatever and bring that by, we are still needing just a couple of trunks. And then this year, you may have noticed we've got some parking challenges, we will say. And so if you maybe would have a little bit of time to help with that parking team on that day, listen, I know that that is a big ask, but we have thousands of people coming and hundreds of cars and so we want to do the best we can um, so that they have a good time that they enjoy themselves and come back so if you've got a little bit of time maybe that day um, it is the 29th you can get some more information out here in the lobby or always on our website at crossroads.church and so now um, I'd like to go ahead and take a moment and pray for this morning's offering so if you are helping out with that this morning why don't you come on forward now, we haven't done this in a while, um, passing the place, and so I just want to take a moment. If you are new here, the thing about this is um, that God invites us to respond, and there's a lot of different ways you can do that. You can do that with prayer. You can do that with giving. Sometimes it's even just touching the plate as it goes by you, giving what is going on in your life to God as well. And so we invite you to do whatever you feel led. If you don't have any of those kinds of things, there's always um, these ways that you can give right here on the screen behind me. Um, and we are thankful that everything that God does, and we know that all of these gifts are going to be multiplied because that's what God tells us in scripture. And I can guarantee you that there are a number of us in this room that can testify to that happening. And so we are grateful and thankful for that. And so would you bow your heads with me this morning as we pray for the offering. God, we are so grateful for the ways that you have moved in each of our lives, God. For the ways that you are moving that we don't see that we don't feel, that we don't acknowledge, but God, we don't have to for you to still be moving. And so God, we lift up these gifts to you today, whatever they are, that you would multiply them to do your work, to bring your kingdom here on earth, God. That you would pour out your Holy Spirit like we just sang about on these gifts, on each and every person in this room, on each and every person joining us online, God that these prayer requests that go in, God, that you are already at work. We are so grateful and thank you because you are already working behind the scenes, God, on each of these prayer requests. God, would you raise up people around each of us to remind us of your goodness, of your love for us, of your incredible power and strength, God. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Thank you, choir, so much. <laughs> Can we thank the choir? Thank you. There is a miracle in the works. I can feel it. Well, good morning, church. My name is Allison Heinz, and today is a very exciting day for us as a church as we begin a new season of ministry here with our new pastor, Mike Hudson. We're very excited. Before we get to that, though, I wanted us to recognize that October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And our beloved Pastor George has served so well this year by being our interim lead pastor. George, we love you and we are grateful for all that you have done and for all that God has done through you um, to serve our church in this season. Thank you. Um, like I said, we're, <clears throat> excuse me getting all choked up. We are really excited this morning to welcome Pastor Mike and his wife Allison to Crossroad today. I'll start with the biological stuff, uh, biographical stuff, not the biological stuff. <laughs> start with the biographical stuff. Okay, I'm just going to stick to my notes. I'm not going to wing this anymore. 
to let you know that Mike is a graduate of Asbury Theological Seminary and an ordained elder in the Global Methodist Church. He has 30 years of ministry experience, both as a youth minister and pastor. He and his wife, Allison, have three grown children, Mac, Lucy, and Jay. Lucy's here with us this morning. I got to see her today already. Some of you will remember Mike from the early days of Crossroad, as he was our youth minister here for many years, both in the warehouse on Bay Meadows Road and also here on Gate Parkway. Some of you grew up in Mike's youth group, or your kids did, and you know how our church family is still seeing the fruit today from that era of ministry. We're so grateful. We're so grateful that God has chosen Mike and that the Global Methodist Church has appointed Mike to be Crossroad's new lead pastor. Would you please join me in giving him a huge Crossroad welcome. How about that? That's funny. That doesn't happen very often. Thanks. I appreciate that. That is awesome. <laughs> well, good morning. Um, let me just start by saying this is crazy. Uh, my, you know, the first time I ever preached a sermon was in this church. We were on the Bay, Me on Bay Meadows Road at the campus there, and and uh, my dad gave me some good advice about preaching a sermon. He said, son, the sooner you get out, the more friends you'll have. <laughs> so in conclusion, let me just say thank you guys for the warm welcome. Yeah, uh, seriously, thank you for, for such a, a great welcome. Allison and I certainly appreciate it. We see all the posters out there, and uh, you guys are wonderful. Um, people have been coming by all week, and, and uh, it's just it's crazy, uh, this whole thing. I really am blown away uh, to be here. Only, you know, only Jesus could make this happen. Um, uh, so it's an honor, really, to be your new pastor. Uh, 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 some of you were here 20, 25 years ago when I was the youth director. Uh, I was about 12 at the time. And uh, now that the uh, statute of limitations has passed on a few things, I, I think I need to come clean on just a couple items. Um, so on that Jungle Cruise trip, uh, I may have accidentally poisoned Gil with carbon monoxide. But he's fine now, okay? So, yeah, allegedly, yes, it, it may have. Um, and uh, I did blow up a dog named Fluffy. Um, it's a long story, uh, but now that I know what I know, if, if I had to do it over again, I would. <laughs> I'd blow that thing up all over. Um, and now I get to be your new pastor, which is uh, a good thing we're a praying church, right? Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, my wife wants me to clarify that, that uh, it was not a real dog that, that I blew up. <laughs> Um, I'm grateful that she doesn't let me tell stories the way I want to tell them uh, most of the time. But, uh, you know, it's, it is always a challenge to be the new pastor at a church. Uh, generally, uh, the way it works is uh, a third of the people are really excited, uh, a third of the people are not excited, and a third of the people are just indifferent. Uh, and I totally get that. You know, when we moved to Venice nine years ago uh, to be the pastor of the church there, I saw this dynamic play out firsthand. We, we, uh, we didn't know anyone, and shortly after we had moved into the neighborhood, the neighborhood was having a garage sale. So we said, okay, this will be a great opportunity to meet some new people and maybe even invite them to the church. So we put some stuff out on the, on the driveway, and we were ready to go. Uh, a couple walks up. And uh, she's wearing a Philadelphia Eagles jersey. He's wearing a Dallas Cowboys jersey. That's what I said. <laughs> and so I, I, I looked at him and I said, wow, how do you make that work? And she laughed. She said, a lot of prayer. A lot of prayer. I said, I understand that. I, I'm a Jaguar fan. <laughs> and we need all the prayer we can get. So if you would please pray for me, that would be wonderful, too. And, and she said, sure. And then she said, she said, well, do you go to church anywhere? And I thought, thank you, Lord. 
this is working out really well. The first people to walk up, I mean, all right, fish in a barrel. So I said, yeah, we go to Christ Church. It's just down the road there. And she, oh, yeah, I know where that is. She goes, I heard they have a new pastor there. <laughs> and people are not happy. I was, I was a little shocked, so I, all I could get out was, really? <laughs> and then she hit me with this. She said, yes, what do you think of it? <laughs> now, there's a hundred different ways that conversation can go at that moment. And I thought for a second, and I said, well, I think he's a dork, but his wife is smoking hot. <laughs> Her eyes got like this. And I never saw her again. I was looking for her in church the next day, but she didn't show up. Oh, folks. Well, let me tell you something. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun. Uh, let's pray together this morning. Father, I am so grateful for the way that you work things out in crazy, unexpected ways. I thank you, Lord, for your presence with us this morning for your love that you have for each one of us and the way that you have been drawing us to yourself. And so we invite you to come, Holy Spirit. Be here uh, as I preach, Lord. I pray that it's you that's speaking, that we would hear what you want to say, that, that as your word goes out, it would produce a harvest 30, 60, 100 fold in our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So when this whole process uh, of me showing up here started in August. I, I met with the church council uh, and they, they asked me why I would want to be the pastor of Crossroad Church. And I gave them three answers. And so I figured I'd share that with you this morning. Uh, the first is that God has called me to be a pastor. And for reasons that I am never going to understand, he chose me to do this long before I agreed to do it. And that took a while for me to get on the same page with him. Uh, but I said yes to Jesus. And whenever I, I doubt that or I get nervous or I grow discouraged, I hear him tell me what he told the disciples in John 15. This is what he, he says. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Right? You know, as a, as a Methodist pastor, I don't get to choose where I go. I get appointed. And all I can do is, is say yes to Jesus. And so this verse here, it gives me courage. Whenever I, whenever I stand up to preach or, or to teach or to lead a congregation, because I know that those he chooses, those he calls, he also equips. And he works in and through them. But God didn't just choose me to do ministry at Crossroad. He chose you as well. You're here. You know, I think about all the people that the Father has chosen in the past. And it's quite a collection of characters. I mean, we read the Bible and we think, oh, wow, you know, those people must have had it all together. But honestly, he, he, God chose Moses. You know, Moses, Moses was a murderer. He had a stutter. And yet God said, you're the one to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. God chose David. David was an adulterer whose own family turned against him, and yet God said, I'm going to establish my throne forever through you. Samson wasn't, wasn't very bright. <laughs> Jacob was a swindler. Mary was a teenager. Peter denied Jesus three times. Actually, all the disciples ran away and left Jesus. Paul persecuted the church. And yet God chose all of them to bear fruit, to make a kingdom impact in the world. And Paul's going to write in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he says, But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. <laughs> that scripture is being fulfilled today in your presence. <laughs> God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. The way we've always said it around here is that God chooses the imperfect. See, God chose the imperfect people to say yes to Jesus, to make a kingdom impact, 
to bear fruit, fruit that's going to last. And here you are this morning. You may think you chose to be here today, but he chose you long before today to say yes to Jesus, to bear fruit that's going to last. And so how's that working out for you? Maybe you're thinking, look, I, I heard him call me a long time ago. I was just a kid then. I was, I was just a teenager. And lots has changed in my life since I, I said that first yes to him. I, I don't know if, if, you know, I mean, I, that was a decision a young person made. I don't know if you can take that seriously or not. I'm here to tell you, Jesus took it seriously. He still takes you seriously today. You see, he counted it then, and he counts it now. He's chosen you to go and bear fruit, fruit that's going to last. He's chosen you to heed his call and to make a kingdom impact right here. Today is a new day. I'm looking for partners in the gospel. Will you join me and say yes to Jesus? You know, the second reason I wanted to, to be your pastor is that I love you. <laughs> I've missed you. And I've seen that these last few years have been kind of hard. In fact, these last three years have, have not been kind to any church, has it? COVID and the shutdown had many people choosing fear instead of faith. And as a result, churches saw people leave and never return. But on top of that, Crossroad has had some significant staff transitions and then was left to find its way out of the United Methodist denomination. And while the leadership and the staff have done a tremendous job keeping the church going and together, it hasn't been without pain. You know, any one of those things would have taken a toll. But all of them, within such a short span, can leave you feeling paralyzed. Leaving, feel, leaving you feeling like, like they used to say in Narnia. It's always winter, but never Christmas. But church, you need to know that Jesus has seen what you've been through. He knows the burdens you've carried both personally and corporately. And he's given me a word for you. This comes from Song of Songs, chapter 2. My lover spoke to me and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one. And come with me. See, the winter is past. The rains are over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth. The season of singing has come. The cooing of doves is heard in our land. The fig tree forms its early fruit. The blossoming vines spread their fragrance. Arise, come, my darling, my beautiful one. Come with me. Today is a new day. It's a day of healing, of restoration. Jesus is on the move, and he's calling us to come with him. I mean, can you hear him this morning? Can you, can you hear him in your soul? Maybe, you, maybe you've heard the old rhyme from Narnia. It goes, I, I, I love C.S. Lewis. It goes like this. Wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bares his teeth, winter meets its death. And when he shakes his mane, we shall have spring again. It is time, church, to arise and press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called us heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Will you say yes to Jesus this morning? <laughs> you know, you know what we call it when a church says yes to Jesus and arises? We call it revival. I love that word. It's one of my favorite words. Free and then revival. <laughs> oh, 
And that brings me to the third reason that I want to be your pastor. I believe Crossroad Church is open and ready for a move of the Holy Spirit like never before. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Listen, COVID was a threshing floor moment for the church. The Lord was shaking out the deadness. With all the programs and activities stopped, we had a chance to rediscover that it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by programs, it's not by events, it's not by clever marketing, it's not by preachers in the pulpit, it's not by musicians on the stage, it's not by coffee in the lobby, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. The disaffiliation from the United Methodist denomination. Hmm. That was a pruning moment to make the tree more fruitful. You see, no longer are we supporting the dead branches of a false gospel of progressive ideology. No, no. We now get to bear fruit of the true gospel of Jesus Christ. We are free to make disciples who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly that Jesus Christ died for the forgiveness of all our sins, that he rose from the dead, defeating death and hell forever, that he's seated at the right hand of God and is Lord of heaven and earth no matter who wins elections, and that he gives us his very own spirit to live holy and bold lives for him, doing everything that he does. Amen? Listen, this is Acts chapter 2. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. All people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. And everyone, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, who wants some of that? I do. I do. Because I know what it's like not to have it. In 2009, I stood on a stage a lot like this one uh, to be ordained as a United Methodist elder. Uh, it took me 10 years to get to that moment. <laughs> Five years to earn a three-year seminary degree. I never claimed to be the brightest bulb on the tree, okay? <laughs> And then five more years to go through the process to stand up here. And so I'm standing in line with a bunch of other folks who are going to be ordained. We're all standing here like this. And one at a time, the bishop will call our name. And so you come up, and, and then you kneel down, and the bishop plays, places his hands on your head and prays for you. And then he takes a red stole like this one, and he puts it over you like this. And then you stand up, and he shakes hands with you. And then you go back and you stand in line. And I'm standing there. And I'm looking at my red. You know what red is, right? You know what the color red is? It's, just, it's the color of the Holy Spirit. This is Pentecost fire. That's what, that's what this is. And so I'm standing back here in line and I'm looking and I'm going, uh, is that it? Ten years? <laughs> I'm not feeling anything other than a letdown, you know? I'm like, this is a little crazy. I, I tell you, feelings, though, can be deceiving. Even though I stood there feeling like Ralphie in, in, the, in the movie Christmas Story, where he discovers that his little orphan Annie secret decoder pen is really nothing more but a crummy commercial. <laughs> I was thinking, what in the world? But feelings can be deceiving. The Lord was at work in that moment. He was answering the prayers of the bishop. Do you know what he was doing when I was sitting there going, is that it? He was waking me up. He was waking me up. He was putting in me a holy discontent. That's what he was doing. You know, it's not easy to wake somebody up who's sleeping. You ever tried? You know, when I was the youth director, I had to go around with a super soaker. 
to make it happen. Because we're on a schedule, kids. Ch -ch -ch Boom! It was in Christian love, okay? <laughs> Listen, that holy discontent started burning in me. See, I was, I was unsatisfied to simply play church. I didn't want to stand at the back of the sanctuary Sunday after Sunday and shake hands with people as they walk by and say, that was a nice sermon, Pastor. And yet nothing changed in their life, either by the Spirit or by the Word of God. There was no transfer. I didn't want to do that. Listen, I was not interested in the latest and greatest trends in church growth or being relevant to a culture in order to reach more people. All that stuff died. I wanted to see the lost get saved. I wanted to see the sick get healed. I wanted to see the sinner forgiven and transformed. I wanted to see the dead come to life. I wanted to bear fruit and make a kingdom impact. I wanted more of the Holy Spirit. I needed revival. So I started praying for the Lord to fill me with his Holy Spirit. And wouldn't you know it, <laughs> that's exactly what he did. And he's still doing it because I'm still asking. I still want more. And I believe Crossroad is more open and ready for a move of the Holy Spirit, for an outpouring like never before. That's why I want to be here. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss what he's going to do in us and through us. It's a new day. It's a new day. And what's that new day going to look like? You have to come back next week, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> huh. But as your pastor, oh, that just sounds funny. I love it. As your pastor, here's what I want you to do every day this week. If you've got a pen, you can write it down. I want you to remember that you are chosen by God to bear fruit, fruit that will last. He's called you by name. You're his. I want you to hear the good news. The winter is over. Spring is here. God's on the move. And I want you to pray for more of the Holy Spirit and expect him to answer. You know, Jesus tells us in Luke 11, he says, how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Jesus is begging us to ask the Father for more of the Holy Spirit. Ask. That's what I want you to do this week. Tell someone it's a new day at Crossroad Church and invite them to come and be part of what God's doing. Because we're going to have a lot of fun. Will you pray with me? Father, we can't thank you enough for this new day. We thank you for choosing us. Thank you for healing us. And thank you for filling us with your Holy Spirit. Now revive us as we say yes to your son, Jesus. We ask all this in his mighty name. Amen. You know, I don't know what the Lord is saying to you this morning, but after the benediction, we're going we're gonna to sing this song in response to, to what you've heard, but after the benediction, I'm going to be right here. I would love to pray with you. If, if there's something that the Lord is stirring in you, if you need healing, if you need the Holy Spirit, if you just need to, to know that God's chosen you, I'm going to be right here. So come on up. Let me pray with you. But uh, why don't we stand? Let's sing our response to the Lord this morning.
Amen.